What's good, A1 gang? Up next, we got Logic. It's an interview. Y'all know I seen this. Had to snatch it ASAP and get it up for y'all. But in this interview, it say he's talking about uh, YS4, One Day, a music video, immigration, Trump, Kanye, and more. So without further ado, hit that subscribe button. If you know how, share this to the Logic subreddit. Let's go. Up. Back again. Back That's a good again. thing. Yeah, like for the last two weeks, fans are like, "When's the interview with Bob? When's the interview with Bob?" Really? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah it's been nonstop. Like, awesome. I think fans have gotten you. Y'all see, he got the big boy Rolly on the forty-one millimeter. Ooh, y'all know he get money. Used to whenever you have an album coming. Yeah, that we're gonna, gonna do we're gonna do this. That's because I don't do a lot of like in-depth press, which is this is actually the first interview i've seen of him i don't know if he really really just don't do many interviews at all or if he stopped after a certain point or what but this is the first one i'm seeing discography and you've put out at least one project every year mm -hmm. since 2010. what keeps that fire in you to want to do that because i feel like if you look at a lot of artists careers there's usually like one two three years at some point in the career where they take a break and they kind of reassess things but for you it's been non-stop where does that feel come from um, I he's saying that he's been dropping a, a mixtape or album, I guess, every year since 2010. But according to my loyal subscribers and the, the Rat Pack who know him best, y'all saying he started dropping some corny shit after a certain uh period. What 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 mixtape or what album was it when he started getting when he started switching shit up? I want to know so I could be sure so I can know when I because I got a whole list of of re, of requests. And I want to know what songs is what, so when I get into them, I can, I can know, I can, I can expect which mixtape is coming from. I think in the beginning, it's like something that I had to do because it's it's just about relevance and want. And then when they get it, they're so used to it, it's easy for them. It's just about maintaining it. Um, so for me now, mm. it's just about maintaining it. I love it. I love it. It's like mm. breathing. It's like you, a six. I was just gonna say, you can tell he do this shit for real. This is this is he was meant to do this shit. This was his calling. Sense like when I create music, it's just easy, but in a fun way. It's not it's not that it is easy to do it. it, it... And I said that before. I could tell that this is easy to him because the amount of his vocabulary, the wordplay he uses, his lyricism. People ain't putting that much energy into rapping if that shit hard to him. I can't picture motherfucking um, Soldier Boy dropping some shit on logic level it's not gonna happen just because it's not that easy to soldier boy trust me if soldier boy could rap this type of shit i'm sure he probably would at least some shit we'd have heard some bars on the, on a different level on this level at least before but we have it so the fact that he doing this shit and just do it every damn near song i hear even if i don't like the song it'd be still some bars in there where i'd be like shit this sh so shout out to logic man it took forever to be able to get to a place where I could just walk in and keep it a secret for your fans. But yeah. What I, does it mean to, at this point in your career, come out with a, another Young Sinatra tape? Um, I think it's dope because as a commercial now mainstream artist, I feel very proud in knowing that like I'm dropping a boom bap hip hop album. There's not really too many people doing that, but especially this way, like very nineties, not, not just like, Oh, Oh, this is some dope hip hop shit over some hip hop drums, but this is like a straight up boom bap album on this scale. Uh, Drop in the comment section if you know what boom bap album means. I'm assuming, like he said, some 90s type of shit with 90s drums and probably instrumentals, but I'm not 100% sure if that's what it is. So let me know. Um, it's it means it's just makes me really happy and I and I I've, I'm proud to do it. After the success of one eight hundred, I think it could have been easy for you to put out a project with a bunch of radio smashes. Yeah. But instead, you put out you know Bobby Tarantino. Yeah. And then now you're putting out the the young Sinatra. Why is it important for you to do that instead of ride the wave of like oh I got radio hits oh let me just put out a bunch of radio hits because that, um, that's what a lot of people would do. Good question. Yeah, but that, I'm already a millionaire. Like not to sound no type of way, but it's like like I used to think that oh if I get a radio hit it's gonna make me millions of dollars. Like yeah, one eight hundred went five times platinum, and I made a lot of money, but I made way more money from signing. You know what? what I never see out of all the songs. 
Y'all done requested me over probably like, I want to say like 60 different Logic songs. Not one of them was this song that's five times platinum. At least I don't know it. I didn't ever, I don't got on my list a 1-800 song and I've been writing down every request. So what do y'all think about that? Is that one of the, the corny songs that y'all said y'all didn't like? Let me know. You know, long-term tour deals and merchandise deals and whatever the fuck and then you drop the return and everybody's like oh he's back oh it's uh, and it's just like <laughs> this is me this is what i do there it's not like any real fan of mine knows like there are different levels of the music that i make you know it's just it, it's just that's what it is like and if you don't like if you love boom bap shit we'll just shut the fuck up i spoke on that before too i can't it was one of my last reactions i did if you know drop it in the comments but he he said a bar where he's like, even though I'm moving on, my fans know, or even though I'm moving on or something, even though I'm no longer here or some shit like that. But he was talking about moving on, going mainstream and shit. He was saying my fans still know that the bar is going to be filled with lyrics or some shit he was saying like that. So I respect him for what he's saying because it's not like, like I, I know y'all saying he dropped a lot of corny shit, but. It sounds like he's very calculated, you know what I'm saying? It don't sound like he's just doing shit and just like he just, he's been rapping and just turned corny. I think he was trying to be strategic and he had some type of idea in his head that he was trying to move forward with so that he can probably broaden his fan base. And, you know, maybe just the OG fans didn't take to it as good as the new fans. But I think like what he's saying is some truth to it. He making music on different levels for like, you know, probably different groups of people. Because think about it. Even his, the shit that, even the shit I heard that I didn't like, he still has some bars in that shit. You can't lie. It just probably wasn't as player and cool as the other shit, but, you know, shit, you can't put out everything just 100%, uh, 10 out of 10, everything just what each fan like. It ain't going to be like that. Some fans going to like certain shit, some fans not, you know what I'm saying? and enjoy this album and you might not like my next album after this you might not like the one after that but you know there's still always going to be real raps real lyricism exactly. and real cadences real flows and it, but bro i can't tell you how many people i meet that are like yo your bobby Tarantino shit that's the best shit you've ever done period it's the best shit you've ever done it's my favorite shit okay cool what am i supposed to fucking just make a bunch of bobby tarantinos for you meanwhile you have a whole group of people over here who's like no 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 incredible true story when you do the space type shit and you're on that that see and that that you know hits on what i just said you know different people gonna like different shit you know you can't expect to like every single thing everything ain't for everybody but i got a list right here of uh bobby tarantino one and uh two requests that y'all gave me so far i got from tarantino one i got uh flexicution the jam wrist feature and pusher t slave one slave two uh bobby tarantino two i got yuck Indica Badu featuring Wiz Khalifa, Midnight, Warm It Up, and 44 More. So if y'all want me to get to some other tracks off either one of those, make sure y'all drop it in the comment section and let me know which mixtape it's from so I can be sure I get to it. That is the best. Like, you have to do that forever or I'm not a fan anymore. Like, it's like, okay. And then there's others, different sides of me, um, just like with the mixtapes. Because back in the day on the mixtapes, people were like, you're trying to do too much. They're like, oh, you got this, you got this trap song, you got this song that sounds like Drake, then you got this that's like some Nas shit, then you got this, like, you pick one, bro, pick one. And I was like, no, I'm not going to pick one. Right. Only back then I didn't have the platform that I do now because I stood while other people were like, you got to pick one, can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't do that. I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm going to very calculated. Do whatever I want. And by doing that, I created Bobby Tarantino. I created Young Sinatra. I created, you know, these uh, different facets of myself on a project and when when i say young sinatra you know what you're gonna get when i say bobby tarantino you know what you're gonna get and it's funny because when it's just on some logic shit like you don't know what you're gonna get i don't know the difference i i don't know the difference break that down to me somebody who really understand this shit what's the difference between a young sinatra uh tape and a bobby tarantino tape like think about what he just said he said you know if i say young sinatra you know you're gonna get that if i say bobby tarantino you know you're gonna get that what's the difference between the two let me know in a good way, uh, conceptually, album-wise, who knows? And you've been saying that since the mixtapes. Exactly. Like if you go back to the mixtapes and you listen to your songs, you talk about wanting to do songs on the radio. You talk about wanting to turn up. You talk about all that stuff since day one. So it's kind of funny that people now... 
sides of them. And you can have favorites. I mean, I have favorites. Yeah, you know, who doesn't? I, I, I got obviously favorites. love the, the boom bap shit because that's you know my lane. But it's like I still appreciate and you know like all the other projects. Yeah, but it's okay to have favorites. But I, to say, I agree. To say that you should only do one thing is not to take into effect that you're a human being with multiple emotions and that you're not here just to please one person and what exactly. They say stuff. But I think a real fan such as yourself could listen to any of the other projects and appreciate it as a whole and just appreciate it and be like, yo, this might not even necessarily. And that's why I think I'm actually a Logic fan because even though I haven't heard of him before like this last like three, four days and shit, everything I've heard, I've been able to appreciate something out of it just off the strength of I can see, you know, he has multiple layers to them you know some shit just maybe i'm not rocking with it as much as the other shit but like i said even if i don't like the beat selection or whatever it is even though i don't like the like the song he's making he still be having bars and shit in there where i still be like you can check the reaction i'm like all right i don't like this but this shit still he just said some cold ass shit though you know so he, he he's speaking the truth it would be my favorite album but yo i think this is your most impactful album right. or your most message driven album and you know i and the most successful album that i've ever done so it just these are things that don't make sense. It's the same shit with like Drake. Like every time Drake drops an album, you know, you have a whole bunch of people that's like, oh, you know, the old Drake or the album before this or Kanye or whatever. But it's like, these motherfuckers still selling hella albums. Right. So why are you buying them? Why are you listening to it? Why are you this or that if you don't really love it or like it or want to be a part of it or... Yeah, but it's okay to have favorites. Everybody does. I do. I have my favorite Kanye kind of yeah, album's graduation, you know? Mine's called... I'm trying to see what, what's on his hat. I'll drive out. Yeah, my favorite Drake album is probably Nothing Was the Same, and then I really love if you're reading this. Drake ones are hard because I feel like it, it's really a mood, like depending what mood yeah, you're, you're right. on. It's but like, that's uh, another thing right there. What mood, like, wow, we're talking about an artist who can give us music for every mood there, that right. you could possibly be in. That's incredible. And people hate, so, but it don't matter. To me, the best way to hate is not talk about something. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, why? Yeah, if you're time? sane, yeah. if you're a human being. I don't understand how you can actually hate on logic. Like, what the fuck is it to hate? I can't even think of shit to hate about the nigga. Being, you know, you got walking YouTube comments. The reason why this album is so special and the people love it and what I've released and what they'll hear so much is because I made them wait for it. Because if I did boom bap album after boom bap album after boom bap, boom bap, boom bap, boom bap, it would just, it, it'd be the same shit. It's like if I did a million trap albums, right. you know, or if I did a million these albums or that albums or whatever. That'd like make a lot you of look sense. at my discography and it's like a roller coaster, uh, like constantly going, you know, upward in a trajectory of, you know, creativity. It, and that's the thing I love about it so much. And that's why this conceptual albums and this shit was just like, oh, I just got to rap. All right, that's easy. That's what I do. Now I'm curious what the fans are going to say. It's like, I want the whole logic back. I want the whole logic back. Now they get the boom bass I'm like, what's next? Yeah, but they'll probably say, like, I even seen a couple of things where it's like, oh, he's he's referencing too hard. The original Young Sinatra's too much. And the... Black, yeah. But, uh, and see, I spoke on that before. Like, I didn't know he does that. I, I I didn't know what to call that. I was saying, like, he was releasing little snippets of other tracks inside songs. I started to notice as I listened to more. But... Like he said, what did you just call that? Uh, They're going to love it regardless. Like, that's what's so awesome about it. What I love about the album is that you do reference. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, that's what he said. He references certain tracks in other songs. And that should be dope. Because once you hear, like, I heard the Dead Presidents first, but then I heard another track that was before that where he had the, he referenced the Dead Presidents instrumental in there. I'm like, oh, that shit was fire. Especially if I'd have heard that one first and then would have heard the Dead Presidents, that shit would have been fire. A lot of tracks. Going into this project, do you sit down with Six? Do you talk about, hey, we want to have a bunch of like soulful samples in it? Or like, did you talk about kind of like a vision or is it like- No, we just say boom bap that? and it's known what that means. You know what I mean? So like, for example, like I do reference older mixtapes and projects, even bringing certain like punchlines and things back intentionally. You should be like mm. excited that you're a fan and you know that thing. You're it's like, a treasure hunt. Wow, exactly. Me. It's yeah. like, oh shit, this is Young Sinatra. This is undeniable. This yeah. is, you know, dear yeah. God. This is, you know, whatever the references are. So the first song you released for Young Sinatra 4 yeah. is One Day. Yes. Why was that the one that you wanted to put out first? Because uh, it's the most positive, you know. Um, to me, that's like the quintessential Young Sinatra, like happy vibe, like dope, like, yeah, I've got those. There was a lot of fans who felt that vibe as well. Uh, I want to represent the message in this album. Um, it would definitely be that song, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll be wiser, I'll make it, I'll do it, I'll get there.
It's that simple. How did you and Ryan uh, Tedder link? It's really dope. I've never worked with a writer before, ever. Hmm. Uh, like, never, ever, uh, really. I've had writers who were singers who kind of like fucked around with like vocals and harmonies and stuff, but never had anybody write a hook. And we just sat down and vibed, and I played him a bunch of the different albums that I had, and he really liked the more boom bap shit. And I was like, oh man, we should we should do something cool. We just wrote it. It was like super quick, and he came with the hook, and Six was there, and we all produced everything, and Kevin on the keys, and it was a good vibe. It, it was very it was very fast. It was to the point, and. Uh, you heard him say, we all produced it. That mean they all finna split them points up. Everybody finna eat off that track. Um, I'm not even kidding. It was like 20 minutes. Why yeah. was that important to you? It was just important because I think that all people deserve to be treated kindly and, and with respect and with love. And regardless of what like anybody could think, like, oh, Trump this and that and America, whatever the fuck. It was like, look, man, like I have so many people in the Latin community in my life that I love. And I see how this affects them, their families, like all the shit. And... Sure, there's people talking about it, but I was like, man, I'm going to do a music video about it, and I'm going to really, like, drive it home. Um, and I think, you know, the statement is well, but the fucked up part is nobody wants to hear it. Hmm. Well, I, I wouldn't say nobody wants to hear it. No, as I'm talking about, like, yeah, no. like, when you put that out, I was like, yeah, this speaks to... But it's a prime example of, like, the music industry. It's a prime example of, like, just what people want or like you know what i mean kind of like want or don't want and i'm glad i did it i stood up and said hey you know this is fucked up and th you know this is what i think is is going on and i want to stand behind this and and, and say and that's what's up I, I appreciate you know him on the on the level he's at his using his platform to speak on social injustices like that because it's a lot of artists let's say drake for instance he's known for not touching you know uh what's what would be considered you know, social issues because he doesn't want to, you know, piss off this side or that side of his fans. You know what I'm saying? So he tries to always just keep neutral. And well, he tries to keep neutral by not speaking on situations. So that way you can't have anything or, or you don't even know his opinion on it. Even though, you know, he tries to play that side like, you know, he's standing up for uh, some injustices. But at the same time, he doesn't really speak on anything. And that's the difference between somebody like this versus somebody like Drake. And I appreciate that. You know, that shit was up. It's something. And I think that's it's a message that can never be taken away. So um, it kind of all says it there, really, in the video. Obviously, I saw a lot of the comments that people put. One of the ones that was really frustrating that I saw a lot of was, Logic, I really love you rapping, but I don't need you to, to talk about politics or I don't need to... Yeah, shut to up and you, dribble. Shut, shut up and, and dribble, yeah. which is exactly what the, the Fox commentator also told LeBron. Yeah. What's your response to, uh, I don't even want to call them fans, because I feel like if you're a fan, you appreciate... Even if you disagree flow. with someone. Right. So like you don't have to do it. The truth is, is if I, if I was on some Kanye shit, and I mean that very respectfully, if I was on some Kanye shit and I was wearing a fucking Make America Great Again hat and, you know, did a video that was like, support the fucking wall, then that person would not be telling me, don't talk about <laughs> politics. They'd be like, yeah, because I'm talking, I'm supporting the politics they like. Clearly, like what I said, it's always, you know, a left and a right side to everything. You know, if you speaking up for one side, the other side most likely is going to be upset. And it shouldn't even be like that because, like, he's a fucking rapper. Why the fuck are you upset about his uh, so political views? Like, just because he rap, he shouldn't be able to speak on what he feel. On, he shouldn't be able to speak on how he feels about what's going on in the world. What kind of shit is that? So it's 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 just bullshit, like you know. But for me, it, do, it really doesn't matter. Like it was, it, it's it's. I don't really care what people are saying about me. It's more hurtful what they were saying, you know, like using using code words uh, for racism, like illegals. Like get those illegals out of here. But it's like we know what the fuck you mean when you say that shit. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just funny to me to be like, oh, I'm never listening to your music ever again. Like you know, you, you lost me with this. You lost it. Like. It's over, blah, blah, blah. And then um, the return comes out. And then those same people, because I kind of kept, kept track, just remembering certain things, the mm -hmm. fucked up things that people would say. Mm -hmm. And then I would see, and then they're posting my music. And they're like, this is incredible. Like, you're back. He's back now. He's, he's, he's not on that polit political shit anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, it's been a week. What the fuck are you talking about? Right. If somebody supports Trump, okay, and you can feel different. Anybody can feel different. We all feel different about the shit. If somebody who supports Trump, you know, like... Loves the same video games I like. 
and the same kind of music and the same kind of places to hang out and vibes and this and all this other shit, but they support Trump, I will still be their friend. <laughs> I will still be your friend and I will respectfully be like, yo, I just don't want to talk about Trump shit, dog. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that that person's a fucking racist. I, I, know, I know people, some of my best friend's parents, okay, who uh, voted for Trump. And I'm kind of like, how the fuck could you, a person of color, mm -hmm. how could they, and they're like, yo, money, man. Like money, tax cuts, this, that. I'm taxed 55%, which is insane, okay? Shit. So it's like, if I made $30 million last year, bro, do you know how much money that is that goes to the government? Mm -hmm. Like that, it, it's really insane. So it's almost in my favor, but I, I'm, not, I'm not with that shit. But to me, like, it, it's, it's almost like the whole Christian Muslim thing. It's like Allah, God, Jesus, whatever. It's crazy that somebody could want to, on both sides, kill the other person. You both have families. You both have, uh, you know, wives and daughters and sons. And you both like music. You both like sports. You both like all these things. But there's like, no, like you will want to murder the other person or be like, fuck them. Or not even let them into your life. Not even have conversations with that person because of their beliefs. And I also talked about Kanye. I said how I felt about Kanye and how I was like, what the fuck, Kanye? Like, you, you're not going to talk. You're not going to stand up and say nothing about what's going on in this country. And I got heat for that. People were like, oh, you talking shit about Kanye? I was like, no, I wasn't talking about shit about Kanye. I was saying, man, you need to stand up. Then Kanye want to come out, you know, with the Make America Great Again hat and all this other shit. And then everybody's like, oh, yeah, fuck Kanye. Like, it's a cool thing. And then I'm on my Twitter talking about artists I love. And I'm like, man, I love Kanye. I love his music. And the people are like, yo, you wrong for that ain't it, chief, or whatever the fuck. They're like, you talking you talk about you love Kanye, man? Fuck you, man. And I'm like, what? I'm like, last year, I, 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 it's not even that I called Kanye out. I was just like, all right, well, Kanye ain't saying shit. Like, like I watched when I was 15 years old and fucking Hurricane Katrina, and I was inspired by Ye. So you know what? I'm going to be the one to say it. I don't fuck with what's going on in the world. And then people want to, like, trip on me, like, oh, how dare you say that about him? Then he wants to come out and, you know, support Trump. And then everybody wants to shit on Kanye. And then I show Kanye love because no matter how I feel about him, I still think he's a fucking genius musically. He's amazing. And I will continue to shout him out, you know. When I say I like Kanye, what I really mean to say is his music has inspired me to do this, but I don't necessarily agree with his Yeah, but you can't, views. it's either one or the other to end today. Right. It's either you fuck with him or you right. don't. It's like, to say you fuck with his music means you fuck with his political views. Means you, and it's just like, that's not true, man. I'll do a podcast when I'm older and just don't give a fuck anymore. Like truly, when I'm in like my like 40s, 50s, and I'm good, I still got a lot of life to live, a lot of shit going on and things to do, I'm going to have a podcast, talk show, something, and I'm going to say the most reckless, wild shit, but I'm going to say it in a way that can be uh, argued and, and whatever, but in a, in a peaceful way, you know what I mean? Like the fact that I say, I don't fuck with Trump, there's a million... Drop in the comment section if you're going to be waiting for that podcast. Let me know right now kids right now in this shit like well trump and blah, blah, blah and it's just like damn it's crazy that i can't just say i don't like drum like fuck like but th imagine the other shit that i want to say so i'm seeing it in sports the most right now where it's for a long time people kind of took the the michael jordan approach which was hey republicans buy shoes democrats buy shoes i'm not going to say anything to offend either i'm just going to kind of keep it you know a certain way and now the headlines for the one day video where logic lashes back at trump for and it's like no i, I didn't do any of that and, and for me it's not it's less about immigration it's more about humanity like really it's like i just out at him that's what the i did logic talks media, about what's going on in, uh regarding immigration or you know logic discusses what's going on in humanity today like but clickbait and all this other shit so if I, if I talked more freely and said the shit I really felt deep down, like really fucking felt, and I didn't PC politically correctly say it the exact way, I'd be ripped and torn apart. That's why I don't do interviews. Because people take the context away. On purpose. Yeah. They do it on purpose, bro. There, there's a publication, and I won't say who it is because I don't want to give them fucking credit. <laughs> you know who it is. There's a publication that I've blocked on my social media because all they would do is post bullshit about me and where I'm from. Right. And then this source doesn't even do their own, it wasn't an interview with them. They took somebody else's interview, posted on their shit, and the headline was, Logic says he's bigger than Wale. Wow. And then I, on Twitter was like, Damn. hey, <laughs> like, I didn't say that. That's not what I said. I was like, and I never hit up publications or that. I was like, I never said this. Like, why? And I literally remember using an F-bomb somewhere. I was like, why in the fuck would you say this? Blah, blah, blah. They uh, retweet me, quote the tweet, 
at Wale and go, oh, they're like basically trying to insinuate beef between me and Wale live in real time. And they're joking and laughing about Damn. it. And I was like, that's, that's super crazy. Why would you talk shit as a publication? I remember uh, Noisy and Vice said some shit about me. Uh, I heard about it. I didn't even see it. Um, but they, my boys had told me that they were just making fun of me. And I love Noisy and Vice. Like, I, I think a personal stance and letting that person represent your entire company. But I think most news outlets these days aren't even trying to report news. They're trying to make news. They're trying I to agree. create their own headline so they can own it by being like, oh, we're going to instigate this so that then we could be the first ones to talk about this. It's like, it's become such a weird cycle. It's like, it's not even about reporting things that happen anymore. Yeah. Tell me a little Okay, so as y'all can see, there's going to be a part two to that. So we're going to definitely be tuned in for that. When that drops, we're going to get it here first. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Drop in the comment section. Let me know anything else you want me to get to. And we gone.